are joined by the one and only Heather McDonald, Manhattan Institute fellow, author of When Race Trumps Merit. She has a fascinating and really unsettling piece in City Journal, uh, California's looming crime catastrophe. Recent legislation makes it easier for felons to claim racial bias. Uh, Heather, we're going to talk to you about this and also the uh, UCLA Medical School revelations. But first, walk people through this because this is one of those things that the first time you hear what's going on in California, even for California, it's hard to believe this is really going on, but it is. What's happening? Well, thanks so much for having me on, Buck. Uh, A law has been passed in California that basically puts into practice every tenet of critical race theory and and anti-white privilege ideas. It holds that because we all know that, of course, the criminal justice system is racist, uh, and the only reason that there's a higher proportion of blacks in prison than other groups must be criminal justice racism. It cannot be higher rates of crime. The law has decided that All that a black defendant needs to do to unravel, to discredit, to stop in the tracks his prosecution is to allege that in the past there was a pattern of bias against black defendants. The law explicitly says it's too difficult to prove bias in the individual case that a defendant was was arrested Uh, out of police bias or was prosecuted out of prosecutorial bias. So we're just going to get rid of that requirement. And all a black defendant needs to do is allege that in the past, members of his race were treated unfairly because of their race. And this is a complete destruction of the idea of individual fault, of individual proof. And the, the, The kicker is, is that as of this year, anybody in prison today in California, uh, if you're a minority, you can retroactively challenge your sentencing or your arrest and get resentenced. Uh, This is a recipe to take down the criminal justice system and the left knows it. They are celebrating this as the opportunity to end what they view as a racist uh, uh, process against blacks. Heather, thanks for coming on. I mean, you have done incredible work on so many different stories relating to DEI and the dishonesty in the way that race is talked about in America today. UCLA, I I would submit to you, and I'm curious if you would agree, that most people out there care not at all about diversity, equity, and inclusion, the more serious the issue that they face is. Uh, For instance, I don't think anybody cares about anything other than do they have the best doctor when they have a serious medical issue. And certainly, I don't think anybody cares about when they get on an airplane, anything other than is the pilot a badass? Am I as safe as I could possibly be? The former that I just mentioned, UCLA is now making diversity one of the hallmarks of its medical training. And as a result, it appears they are admitting severely underqualified students to be trained as doctors. What is the data showing us and how alarming should that be, given that UCLA is considered to be one of the most elite, uh, I believe, of the medical institutions out there, certainly in the state of California? Well, it's extraordinarily alarming, Clay, but it's far beyond UCLA. This is going on everywhere and it's been going on for decades. Uh, We are admitting students on the basis of race, not merit, uh, that are not competitively qualified. They are not keeping up. And when, when minority students that have been admitted under these massive racial preferences, they're admitted with scores on the medical college admission test that would be automatically disqualifying they're so low if presented by a white or Asian applicant. Predictably, they end up at the bottom of their class. They struggle to pass exams, qualifying exams. And so the result is, of course, well, we're not going to actually now reimpose meritocratic standards. We're going to lift those standards as well. And so we'll pass them along. 
the, but this has been going on for a very long time, Clay. In, in the 1980s, there was a Harvard Medical School professor who wrote a very anodyne editorial in the Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA. And he recounted that a student at a prestigious medical school, which turned out to be Harvard, but he didn't name the school, had failed the medical licensing exam five times and Harvard passed him along anyway because the pressure to show diversity was so great. We know that if you have not been able to pass licensing exams, the data shows you're gonna be much more likely to be brought uh, before a medical licensing board for malpractice. It has an effect on patient outcomes, on patient mortality. This data has been out there for decades and it's completely brushed under the rug because America has decided that its racial guilt is so enormous that it would rather subject unknown patients to less qualified or unqualified physicians than live with the fact that the academic skills gap is so huge that if you maintain meritocratic standards, you're not gonna have racial proportionality. The solution to that is not to tear down the standards. Our standards are not racist, whether it's in the criminal law or in medicine or in high tech, those standards are not racist, they're colorblind. The problem is the skills gap and the problem is the crime gap. We're speaking to Heather McDonald and she's got a really important piece that's uh, cross-posted right now up at clayandbuck.com. So you can go to clayandbuck.com and, and you'll see California's looming crime catastrophe by Heather McDonald. By the way, crime is already a problem there, but it's gonna get a whole lot worse if this law that she's talking about uh, continues to be uh, put into practice. There's this change in the ability for felons to uh, contest their incarceration and their prosecution based on the allegations of historic group racism. Um, but Heather, one one issue that I feel like doesn't get anywhere near enough attention, we're talking about the uh, on the medical school side of things, the changing of standards. It seems that the Supreme Court has made pretty clear that it's actually you're actually not allowed to do this anymore. I mean, you're you're not supposed to be doing this anymore. But are they just doing it in all these schools anyway? I mean, how how do we finally get? And in California, it's been illegal to do this under state law for a long. They got rid of racial preferences, I think, back in the '90s. But people just do it anyway. Is that the state of play? Of course, there's no way that these schools are going to give up on diversity. Diversity and the, the fight against phantom racism is the only unifying ideology on a college campus today. It's brought us the Hamas protests, the, the pro-Hamas hysteria, because that's it's all linked. It's all intersectional. Uh, you know, you just simply believe that whites are evil. Western civilization is evil. Israel is now uh white and Western and therefore evil. And so yep. you have these bizarre alliances. Uh, but yes, this is the, this, they've been, they've been trying to duck the rules in California for a long time. And the way they do that is with this idea of holistic admissions. So they say, well, we're not really looking at race, but we're looking at economic disadvantage or the individual that it's just been so hard to struggle against racism. By the way, you're also black that we're going to admit you. And sadly, uh, the Supreme Court decision two summers ago that banned racial preferences did allow a very big loophole in where Chief Justice Roberts said, well, of course, we can't uh, ban you from taking into account individual essays. And so the schools can continue noticing legally that the author of an essay is black and they can say, well, we're not just, we don't have some hard and fast racial quota. It just so happens that when we do holistic admissions, we still end up promoting minority students who again, would be automatically disqualified if their grades and test scores were presented by whites and Asians. It's a complete double standard. It's a war on excellence. And let's be honest, this is a very difficult thing to say, but you guys have the courage to say it and you've been saying it. It is a war on whites. And now it's a war on Asians as well. Heather, are you optimistic? I'm trying to have an optimistic day as we roll into the uh, into the holiday weekend. And I wanted to hit yeah. you with something. You've been very uh, important in talking about the war on cops. In the wake of 2020, 
that we have seen police officers constantly targeted. The rates of violence against them have skyrocketed. I saw a recent poll where support for police officers in America is starting to skyrocket back up as one of the most trusted uh, groups of people in America. That used to be the case for most of my life, I would imagine for most of your life. Are you seeing or hearing from your sources any suggestion that the war on cops, which was unmistakably uh, occurring for years, has started to lead to more people out there saying, wait a minute, this is way overboard. We've got to back the blue. We've got to support police and their ability to do their job. Well, it depends on what people you're talking about. If you're talking about your average American, that well may be the case. The question is, are the policymakers uh, pulling back on that? And, you know, if I want to be optimistic, which is very much against my nature, but I'll, I'll go along with your Memorial Day push here. Uh, it is the <laughs> I case appreciate it. that, you know, when, when the Biden goes around saying, oh, we've got the lowest crime rate ever and crime is dropping, A, that's not true, but crime is dropping. The reason it's dropping to the extent it is, and that's still very contestable, is because a lot of these left-wing cities have said, whoa, we need more cops. Now it's very still very hard to hire cops. There's a recruiting crisis in this country because who wants to start a job when from the first day, the president of the United States is gonna be saying you're a racist and the, the entire elite democratic class and the media is gonna be saying you're a racist. But there are some jurisdictions like Baltimore, Washington, DC that have pulled back on some of the anti-cop measures and are saying we need proactive policing, we need law enforcement officers to use their constitutional powers of observation to make stops, to question people engaged in suspicious behavior. So that has been changing to a certain extent. On the other hand, you know, I'm watching Chicago right now where there's a battle over whether to reinstate uh, shot spotter technology. The mayor Brandon Johnson wants to get rid of it because get this, cameras are racist. Uh, audio technology is racist. If it turns out that you put audio sensors to hear shootings and those audio sensors, which by the way, have no consciousness, they don't know where the shots are coming from, who's shooting the gun, neither does the police for that matter, but the, but the sensors certainly don't. Those are racist uh, audio sensors because they show us that the vast majority of drive-by shootings occur in black neighborhoods and who are the victims blacks but we're not supposed to care about that so the left wants to get rid of shot spotter technology because it's racist in telling us that blacks are shooting each other at, at just enormous rates black juveniles are shot at 100 times the rate of white juveniles in the post george floyd race riot world but there's parts of the chicago city council that is standing up to mayor brandon johnson in chicago and saying whoa we want the shot spotter. And here's the really hilarious thing, Clay and Buck. Johnson wants to cancel the shot spotter contract, but only after the DNC convention. <laughs> he will we'll keep it then so that we can maybe keep the gangbangers off the street and, and minimize our chances of having, you know, conventioneers shot in a drive-by shooting. After that, we're going to get rid of it. But the council is pushing back and saying no. This is a technology that works and we're not going to buckle under the absolutely preposterous charge that a sensor for shooting is a racist uh, machine. Chicago would be such a great city uh, and get such a renaissance, I think, if they could just get the crime situation under control. But yes. Democrats aren't willing to do what they need to do. Uh, Heather McDonald from the Manhattan Institute. Uh, when race trumps merit is her book also Go to clayandbuck.com. Her piece, California's Looming Crime Catastrophe, is there. Heather, great work as always. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Clay and Buck. It's an honor. She really does do phenomenal work. I'd encourage you to go read that book, Fearless in an Era, when Buck, as you well know, far too many people in yeah. media are cowards. That is the word for her, fearless. Yes. Fearless and factual. Which yeah. Is good. Good combo. Uh, look, you know it's another good combo? Not having huge issues with your house. And... Right now, backyard of the Travis household, there is wiffle ball practice going on. My boys are going to want to be playing wiffle ball the entire Memorial Day weekend. They would play 15 hours a day if they could. And as a result, there's wiffle balls all banging into my house at all hours, all day long. Now that school is out for the summer, it's going to become even more incessant. Also, soon, 
Those gutters, they're going to be filling up for fall. Maybe these May rain showers that are coming down right now. It's summer, probably raining a lot more around wherever you are, and you're seeing them even more. If you own a home, one part of that maintenance is the rain gutters, particularly if you have a yard full of trees. Uh, When the water can't escape, seeps into the house, your foundation, no fun. You may have experienced that. You ever look up, see those gutters pouring rain, and then you're like, "Uh uh-oh, that ain't the gutter. That's coming down through another part of the house. Probably has happened to you. It's happened to me. You can help prevent that with Leaf Filter. They're coming out to my house. You can save 20% for sure, up to 30% if you are a senior citizen or there's a military discount. Again, free inspection up to 30% off at leaffilter.com slash Clay and Buck. Website spelled L-E-A-F filter.com slash Clay and Buck. No spaces between the names. See the representative for warranty details. 20% off for sure. Up to 30% off with senior military discounts. One discount per household. Get hooked up now. LeafFilter.com slash Clay and Buck.